Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. With this video, I'm gonna start a new series in which I'll be talking about mega structures of India. And as we progress, I will be talking about the ancient mega structures that we have built in India. So this will be a very interesting and very insightful series for all of you, all of the architecture aspirants over there. So today's topic is the Chenab River Bridge. This is one of the most prestigious and one of the most complex projects that India has ever built. I am not saying this term very loosely because we have built really, really incredible projects. But this project is one of the most incredible projects that Indian government has ever sanctioned and Indian private sector has ever built. And this video will actually talk about details of this bridge and why this bridge is that important and why we should know about this bridge because it can actually give us perspective of how these structures are constructed and how these structures are made. So try watching this video till the end. This video will be a really informative video for all of you. And without any delays, let's get started with the video. So guys, let's start with the basics of this project. Do you know that this bridge is actually 35 meters taller than Eiffel Tower? This stands around 357 meters above sea level. The span of this bridge is 1,315 meters. That means it is 1.3 kilometers long. The main highlight of this project is the span and the height of the bridge. It is supported by a quadratic arch and because of the hilly terrain, both the foundation are on different level. The bridge can withstand an earthquake of intensity 8 on the Richter scale. And guys, this is one of the first bridge that has been built with the collaboration with DRDO. So DRDO is Defense Research and Development Organization of India. And they have made this bridge in such a way that it is blast proof. Because as you know, Jammu Kashmir has always been targeted by Pakistan-based terrorists. So this was a very important factor that they had to incorporate. This bridge can even withstand high velocity winds of up to 244 kilometers. With the lifespan of 120 years, this is one of the most amazing bridge that I have ever seen in Indian history. There were around 300 engineers working on the development of this bridge. 1,300 site workers were used to build this bridge. This bridge actually took seven long years to be completed because of the hilly terrain and there were no connectivity through road on this site. The construction of this bridge can be divided into three parts. First part is the slope stabilization. So what happens in slope, slope stabilization? Because it is on a very steep hill of around 44 degrees to 77 degrees at some angles, this was a very unstable, unstable terrain. So they had to make a very stable and gradual slope out of it. So in slope stabilization, there are three methods. First is geometric method. Second is hydrological method. Third is chemical and mechanical methods. So in the first method, the geometry of the hill is changed. So you will find a different level of steps that are being created and in which most of the exterior rocks that are loose, that are often loose, are removed and steps are created by blasting of rocks, by cutting off rocks, by creating different gradients around it. So this is the first technique. Second is hydrological method. In hydrological method, what they do is they drill into these rocks. They drain all the water out so that the hill stabilizes and then they build over it. And the third and the most important method is the chemical and the mechanical method, which was used in here. First, they changed the geometry of the entire slope then they used chemical and mechanical measures. So once they stabilized the geometry, then they went ahead and 
and drilled rock bolts into it. So what are rock bolts? Rock bolts are just bolts, just normal, very big rods which are inserted into the into the hills in an angle and these go deep into the rock and kind of stabilizes that entire portion so thousands of these bolts were drilled into the hill and that's how they stabilized the slope and then a coating of cement reinforced with fiber steel was sprayed on the entire face of this two hills by this you can imagine the type and the complexity of this entire entire process the first process so now second step the erection of the piers or the columns so the longest pier is 137 meters tall and the base of this pier is 50 50 meters by 37 meters wide to withstand the huge pressure that will be coming onto it and to withstand the high intensity earthquakes that this bridge should withstand these piers were constructed then next level comes in which the central arch is erected so how this arch was made is also very interesting one of the world's highest highest cable mounted cranes were used as you can see on your screen these are the cranes that were going and placing each pieces of these arch onto a place and then moving from bottom to the top this arch was completed after this arch was completed then they started erecting the metal columns that will finally support the rail bridge that will be going over it and now coming to the fourth step probably in which the horizontal pieces of the bridge were placed these pieces of the bridge are placed by using a machine that is called the bridge layer machine or the underslung movable scaffolding system or the segment lifter so these are the types of machines that are used in which a segment that is already made on the ground is fixed to this machine this machine goes to the edge of the bridge and then places this piece onto its place and for this every measurement should be precise every blocks should be the same everything should go as planned because you don't get second chances over here and this is how the entire horizontal bridge was built and one of the most interesting part is if two or three of the pier on both the sides are damaged or are broken or are targeted by enemy states like Pakistan then also this bridge will keep standing this bridge will be weak but it will stand and the train will pass so that's the marvel of this bridge that's why this bridge is so important for India that's why this bridge is so important for Jammu and Kashmir and that's how we prove that Indian engineering is not less than anyone else. The most important part, this bridge is made in India by an Indian company that is called AFCON and I'm really proud to say that, that this is the mega structure of India. And not only India, this is one of the biggest and the most amazing bridge that world has ever seen. And we have done it and we have built it. So feel proud of being an Indian. Share this video to as many people as possible who need to know about the construction projects that are going on in India. And guys, if you like this video, go ahead, hit a like and subscribe to my channel. Take care of yourself and guys, see you soon.